we are going to be demonstrating a labral augmentation of the hip. This is a right hip cadaveric specimen. We've prepared all the way down to the anterior most aspect of the hip joint. If you look at where the TAL is, or transverse acetabular ligament right there, that's around 5 o'clock. We do not want to remove the bulk of this capsular tissue in the front. In fact, we want to preserve it at all costs. So what we've done is created this preparation behind the native labrum and in front of that capsular tissue, which is a very unique place to be. But you can see how far we can go. We can go all the way down to the most anterior aspect of the hip joint and without disturbing the iliopsoas fossa or this native tissue. So it's very important to have this view in mind during your preparation. And we're going to show the anchors that have been placed in this posterior aspect of the hip. But you can see we've placed two already, uh, almost down to about nine o'clock in the back of the hip. We want to avoid entanglement of any sutures that are being placed in and around the native tissue because you can see the tension already being placed on that tissue. We do not want to have a transection of those longitudinal fibers there. The point is we pass the repair stitch around the native tissue with each successive anchor placement. So the last one has been placed because that's where the preparation was. The second to last one has been placed. We've utilized a couple of unique Arthrex products. Most importantly, the Arthrex Knotless FiberTac this is the newest and improved version of this product. This is machine tapered with a stiffer Generation 2 inserter available to be used with both the straight and curved drill guides, which is very important because it allows for such variability with surgeon preference. Very low profile, about 1.8 millimeters. So really fantastic product here. Note that the anchor was drilled in the Dalla portal here through the cannula. We're going to take our suture retriever and retrieve out the shuttle sutures from the second to last anchor out through the mid anterior portal. And now we'll take the Arthrex Swift Stitch. And once you've loaded it, I just keep a little bit of tension on the counter loop so we do not have any kind of loop generation as we go through the native tissue. We will then simply pass the uh, Swift Stitch beyond the native tissue, deploy, come around and grasp that suture. And we'll go and park this repair stitch just like we have for number one. It's important to clamp the sutures to the drape in the same way they were placed in and around the acetabulum so we know which is which. So this being the last, this being second to last. And then we'll just repeat the process. Then we'll take the anchor. I'll take a mallet. We want to set the anchor so there's about a millimeter of pullback. Now the anchor is set. Grasp the shuttle sutures through the mid-anterior portal. Take a swift stitch. I want to make sure we don't have any penetration of the anchor or the uh, anchor sutures, which we do not. Pass beyond the native. And I go slow here because you do not want to transect that tissue. Um, it's very important. And we'll repeat the steps. So at this point, we've passed five anchors. This is just real estate. So we're, we're going to go until we can go no more to the front. We've established where we want to start posteriorly based off of our view of where the labral tissue was very poor in quality. So now what we're going to do is find this little alleyway. We've prepped the bone and work our way to the frontmost aspect, probably around, I'd say, four o'clock. That's where we're going to dock the graft. I'm sort of going to walk this drill bit in this prepared space. So now we're there and we're going to put our final anchor in. We're not going to pass it around the native tissue. It's going to be the anchor point for the graft and we do not want to have any tension on native labrum as we're passing the graft. So we're going to leave it like that. It's in the front and it stays there in the front. Now we're going to perform graft passage. I will actually take the shuttle sutures from the last anchor dropped, take those out of the mid anterior portal. So the repair stitch of the anterior most anchor or the last one placed is remaining inside of the cannula. So what we're going to do from the posterior lateral portal is pass a kingfisher and have it waiting for us so that we can grasp the uh, graft when it's ready to be grasped. Your camera is also important because you need to get a full view of where you are. So you see how we are not inside of that last stitch. At this point, we're ready to pass the graft. 
the preparation of this is quite simple, actually. The front end of the graft going to the anterior most portion of the acetabulum is left nude. The back end of the graft is prepared with a fiber loop suture that's passed in a baseball whip stitch with a few throws. Any number beyond three is fine. And then the final one is one posterior to the final passage. And we have kept the loop intact on this suture so we can utilize this to pull the graft through the joint when ready. For a graft passage, I take a suture retriever and I just anchor it into the loop at the 50 yard line. To prevent entanglement, I'm gonna have the assistant just hold the suture that's in that first anchor that way. I'm gonna ride it through the cannula uh, opposite. And so now we're gonna come in. We're gonna go ahead and grasp the suture loop from the jaws of the retriever. And so we're gonna pass the graft now into the cannula. We wanna make sure we have not passed the, the graft all the way through so it's still here. And then take the slack out of your blue suture. So you see how there's no entanglement inside the cannula with the suture and the graft. The graft is coming out toward us. And now we're going to pass this repair stitch through the loop end of a free Keith needle. Now where you pass it matters because remember this is docking the uh, graft into the front end of the acetabulum. So if you think about this coming through in the middle, well you're not leaving yourself much real estate for the, the second pass in a mattress fashion. So I kind of give a little bit of spread through the actual graft from top to bottom. That way we have a nice horizontal mattress configuration and we're just taking a slack out as we go. And now I use the knot pusher kind of like a joystick. I'm not pushing so much with my knot pusher, but I'm pulling with my back end. I'm just using the knot pusher to remove the slack in that blue suture because you do not want it to get tangled up on you as you're bringing the graft in. Now I'm gonna use the joystick and I'm gonna push it to the front so now what I've done effectively is position the graft to the front of the hip. I'm still in control of it because my joystick is behind the graft there. And that's the first anchor. Remember, it's not placed around the native labrum. So we'll go and get the loop stitch. And you can tell which one is a loop stitch without having to play with it outside the hip is because it has a circular structure where the tape is flat. So now I know this is a loop and I can grab that and just anchor my first anchor home. So you want to be very careful to assess the positioning of your graft and see how it's getting suction into that place. We'll just sort of pull tension, making sure it's sitting nicely, but it's sitting there ready to go. And I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to cut it yet. We're going to now proceed on with anchors two through five, which is pretty simple because you've already done the hard work with the placement of it. We'll go and get number two. And I know that this is number two because number one sits by itself outside of the mid anterior portal. So a lot of this is very much suture management. It's, it's really just a label repair with a little bit more suture management. So you can see how now it's taking shape, right? But the front end now, I can even tension a little bit more, but that's it. I don't want to pull the suture out because it's really nicely anchored in the front. And that's our second repair stitch. Now what I will do is cut one and two. And so, you know, one is there, way in the front. And two is there. And be sure that your assistant or you pull off your clamps as you go. So this is the next one to come off. And so now it's important that we just repeat the steps. And you've already done the hard part by passing your stitch around the native labrum. You'll go and grab, get your, your loop stitch, and just repeat the steps. We've completed the majority of the uh, augmentation. You can see how nicely now the native tissue has approximated up against the graft. We're at the final graft uh, anchor point now. So what we're gonna do is have our assistant remove the last clamp. And we're just gonna go and grab that, that repair stitch that's already passed as seen here. Pull that out and then go and get your final loop stitch. There is a final tightening that can occur because you can position the graft in its final position before you actually cut. You see how the graft seems to want to roll in front of the native tissue? We're going to just simply push it behind it to kind of position in that angle. And I can do this in any view that I want. And I'm going to put it right there. And I'll have my assistant pull tension on that last stitch. 
And so what I've done is I've actually taken tension off the stitch by doing this maneuver. Because if I didn't, the counter force would be all on the anchor itself. So I like that position. I, I think it, it really does sit nicely. I can pull a little bit more slack out of the system there. So we will take a final cutter. And so that's your completed augmentation. We can touch it up with some wanding if desired. And I can keep going. I could put more anchors in. But for demonstration purposes, when we have completed this, we will then amputate the remaining portions. So our assistant is pulling tension on the remaining portion of the graft. We choose a point. We take some heat to it. You can take a scissors or whatever instrument you like. But be careful not to obviously cut your final stitch so that when it is amputated, it will exit the posterior lateral portal. And that's your augmentation. Again, from the anterior most aspect to the posterior most, we could have kept going as far as we wanted, but a really nice, robust appearance of that graft. Remember, the first anchor is so far anterior, you're not even going to see it from here, but you know it goes one step beyond this one. It goes all the way down there. So it, there's, there's bulk behind that native labrum all the way to the front of the acetabulum. We'll take traction off of the hip and you're going to watch the femoral head come back into position against this even cadaveric uh, tissue with the augmentation behind it. And so you can see how we have a nice labral seal with compression of that graft pushing the native labrum down against the femoral head. And so we've reconstituted that seal. Even in degenerative tissue, we've given the hip communication with its native biology. Post-op protocol is no different from an augmentation or a reconstruction in my hands. Six weeks of partial weight bearing, 20 pounds, flat foot. Get the patient in PT the next day.